Two gargantuan beasts will crash courses in a battle of epic proportions. On one end, a colossal predatory shark, once thought extinct but brought to the surface, emerging from the depths to inflict destruction and doom. This, ladies and gents, is the Meg. On the other end, a genetically modified monster brought back to life after being extinct to inflict terror and awe on anyone who lays eyes on it. This is InGen's Mosasaurus. This episode will cover all their battle attributes, speed, intelligence, weapons, and more to determine the outcome in a fight to the death between both contestants. There is only one spot in the top ranks of the ocean's food chain. Who will win? Watch till the end to find out as we witness the most epic underwater battle of all time, the Mosasaurus versus the Meg on Koji Center's brand new monster face-off. Before we enter the analysis platform, we will first make clear the proportions of these two creatures before they face each other in the arena. The Meg, or Megs, were featured in the 2018 film. Here we were introduced to a massive, previously thought extinct shark who was surpassed by an even larger second specimen that appeared later in the film. The Meg creature designers from both the book and the novel did take the time to design a shark that looked more or less similar to the paleo-accurate Ototus megalodon that existed a while ago. This animal was not 100% accurate, but it did feature a bulky build that was seen in the real-life megalodon. Thanks to this, we will be capable of estimating the weight of this creature in this simulation. Recent methods of measuring megalodon using its vertebral column suggest that this shark could measure close to 70 feet and measure 100 tons. A 60-foot megalodon could hit around 50 tons. But how does this compare to Jurassic World's Mosasaur? This marine reptile is perhaps the most misscaled creature in the Jurassic franchise, often changing its visual scale literally every time it shows up on screen. Its official size has been changed frequently as well. Despite this, the most consistent metric is around 21.9 meters or at around 72 feet in length. Note that any slight increase or decrease in size for both of these animals will result in a drastic change in mass. But we can figure it out if we use a paleo-accurate mosasaur and scale it up to the Jurassic World's iteration of this animal. The specimen known as Penza, who was around 12.5 meters long, will help us get an estimate of the mass of Jurassic's Mosa. Using the square cube law, we can come up with an in-gen mosasaur that measures around 72 feet and weighing at around 50 tons. To come up with the most equilibrated fight possible, we will avoid using overscaled models such as this one, lest this would be an absolutely unfair squash match. Its opponent will be the first megalodon seen in the film, measuring around 55 feet in length and weighing at a whopping 65 tons. Now that we have the appropriate proportions required for an equilibrated matchup, let's now enter the analysis platform. Number 1. Armor this attribute analysis will determine which one of these beasts' armor can take and repel damage better than the other. The Meg and its extinct ancestor both seem to have a smooth, unarmored layer of skin. This layer, however, should not be underestimated. Upon taking a closer look, we find what is known as denticles, small teeth that are neatly arranged along the shark's skin that serve both as armor and hydrodynamic enhancements, not only giving the shark protection against trauma, but also reducing water resistance, helping it swim faster and quieter. These thick hides were useful for both protection and body temperature insulation, meaning that it had to be thick. At around 8 inches of hide underneath the scales, thickest around the belly and neck, this layer or armor wrapped around a thick muscular creature would make it most difficult to bite on. But how does this in-gen mosasaur compare to the Meg? It's worth mentioning that the real-life Mosasaur and InGens differ greatly when it comes to armor. The real, extinct Mosa had scales that ranged in shape and size. Some even evolved to resemble shark denticles, which were also used to swim quietly underwater. This changes greatly when it comes to this genetically modified creature. InGens Mosasaur differs from the real Mosasaur by having an array of osteoderms aligned on its back. Osteoderms differ from scales given that their bony composition makes them a bit more resistant, and these usually come with thicker layers of hide to firmly hold these in place. 
the result is a stiffer layer of armor that will be a lot more difficult to bite through. However, this also comes with its drawbacks. Having these protruding formations only means that unlike the shark, this guy will be creating greater water disturbance while swimming. In other words, this guy is going to be a loud swimmer, making the act of sneaking up on the shark almost impossible. Another drawback, and perhaps the worst one, is that this crocodilian-like armor does not seem to cover the underbelly of this creature. Yes, this armor does compensate for the lack of blubber found in the real Mosasaur, allowing it to look more robust, but this coverage does not appear on this lower area, leaving it vulnerable to attacks from below. But is it still enough to win the edge? To find out, we must also take into account the shapes of these animals. On one end, we have a much more stout animal with a deceptively thick hide, making it difficult for any animal to inflict a lethal bite on a critical organ. And on the other end, we have a narrower creature with resistant armor on its upper body, but none that would provide reliable protection against a well-placed bite from below. For this reason, the first edge goes to the Meg in overall armor. Number 2. Vulnerability Initially, you would think that this is a category you don't want to win. The metric used to determine who wins the edge in this category is how well the contestant will perform in combat after the vulnerable points were critically hit. Beginning with the Meg, we find that being large means big, exploitable weaknesses. In this case, the gills. Most sharks have a total of five gills. The designers of the Meg went ahead to give this shark seven. These gills now span a larger surface area, but why exactly are these a weakness? Let us explain. Gills require some degree of flexibility to function. After all, their purpose is to allow water to come through, allowing these creatures to intake oxygen. To allow this, sharks have thinner skin to allow said flexibility, which also makes the organs underneath more vulnerable and easily exposed if injured. This is why they tell you to hit the most sensitive organs of a shark if you ever come in contact with one. But will the Mosasaurus know to target this? In the real world, dolphins exploit this weakness by ramming them specifically on this area. Orcas take this a step further and literally bite these off, or sink their teeth into the shark and flaying them alive. In the real prehistoric era, Mosasaurus and Tylosaurus did not coexist with Megalodon, but were acquainted with other big sharks such as Cretoxyrhina, which suggests that they did know how to defend themselves against such animals and probably figure out weaknesses over time just like modern-day dolphins and orcas. Note, however, that if the Meg does get hit or gets his gills injured, he does still have another set of working gills on the opposite side of its body. It will be distractingly painful and would probably affect its stamina, but it's not enough to render this shark useless. Injure both sets, however, and we have a problem. Upon observing the overall build of the Mosasaur, we find that in this specific fight, it might actually have several weak points. Megalodons and most definitely this fella would over time learn to target the body parts that would aid its prey in locomotion, the tail and flippers. So, how functional would the Mosasaur be if any one of these were critically injured? If the Meg managed to actually sink its teeth into the tail of this Mosa, it wouldn't necessarily be rendered motionless just yet. Remember, this animal, unlike whales, has a total of four flippers that can still aid in propulsion. It won't be as fast, but will definitely still be able to make its way around. The problems start at the loss of two or more flippers, but getting to this point is really unlikely given that the Mosasaur wouldn't put itself at risk of losing more limbs, especially because it's an agile creature. So who wins the edge here? Although the Meg seemingly has less weak spots, they are relatively easy to get to by this agile creature, increasing the likelihood of the Mosasaur hitting both and rendering this animal useless sooner. In contrast, if the Mosasaur does get injured, its larger array of locomotive body parts will allow the Mosasaur to stay in the fight a lot longer. This one is close, but for this battle category, InGen's Mosasaur will take the edge when it comes to having less exploitable weaknesses. Number 3. Stamina This will determine how efficiently these animals can process oxygen, retain it, and use it for combat purposes, and for how long. Even if water is made up of multiple oxygen molecules, it's actually less oxygen-rich by volume than breathable air. 
Oxygen is a gas that can be compressed easier inside lungs and filtered into the bloodstream more efficiently than oxygen stored underwater. With this in mind, let's go visit our Meg. Large sharks like this one keep a constant supply of oxygen intake thanks to a method they used known as ram ventilation. Swimming forward, forcing water past their gills and keeping their mouth partially open, ensuring a constant steady flow of oxygen powered by muscles that can repair themselves rapidly from strain. Allowing these sharks to swim onwards from the day they were born until the day they die. That's right, these animals need to constantly keep swimming or else they'll drown. So, how does this tie in with stamina? To maintain high speeds, the Meg would be able to keep this momentum thanks to their mentioned hydrodynamic skin, requiring a short burst of energy to attain a certain velocity and then resorting to less potent movements to keep them at that speed problems begin to arise whenever this animal has to slow down, turn, and then speed up again. This will be almost impossible for the Meg in this fight because their oxygen intake is not enough to sustain many consecutive bursts of speed. In the real world, this is reflected by sharks' all-or-nothing approach when hunting. Committing to the initial attack, if it fails, then they will retreat and wind up enough energy and momentum for a second attempt. The Mosasaur is a lot different from the Meg in that it breathes air on the surface. Not only that, it's worth noting that the lungs of ancient marine creatures evolved to store as much oxygen as possible, equipped with lungs that could compress vast amounts of air in less room. Additionally, the blood of underwater tetrapods can carry more oxygen in the red blood cells than animals that live on land. In their case, special organs such as enlarged kidneys can act as extra repositories for oxygenated blood. Sort of like a diver's tank, this lets marine tetrapods exercise prolonged movement, more than an equally sized fish. In this fight, the Mosasaur, if not critically injured, would be able to have enough energy and stamina to maintain a relatively active fight, moving around and changing directions faster and more efficiently than the Meg. It's no wonder why air-breathing organisms ended up being the dominant force in the oceans. In this particular battle category, we learn that the Mosasaurus will be able to keep up with a prolonged fight, giving it the edge in stamina. Number 4. Agility in this category, the one who takes the edge will be decided by the following metric. How quickly can these animals turn around and redirect their momentum? The Meg in the film seems to be pretty agile and nimble for an animal of its size. It has been seen to make 180-degree turns and change their ascent and descent along the y-axis pretty fast. But will this be enough to win the edge? This shark steers largely with just pectoral fins and a static dorsal as compared to the Mosasaur's four flippers. An important factor to take note of is its range of movement. Remember, sharks need to move forward for proper oxygen intake through the gills, meaning that the Meg cannot move backwards. That's right, sharks work only with unidirectional flow, meaning oxygen exchange requires water flow over the gills exclusively from the front, which puts a hard limiter on this shark's range of motion. Or worse, if this animal is shoved backwards or not allowed to move, this animal could potentially drown. That is, for a long time since shark's blood can store lots of oxygen. The Mosasaur, on the other hand, can steer with four sets of muscular broad flippers that serve as very functional steering devices, allowing this animal to not just swim forward, but also sideways, upwards, downwards, and even backwards. In addition to that, this creature's flexible body will allow the Mosa to change direction much faster, in contrast to the Meg's wider turns. Mixed with this animal's greater stamina, the Mosasaur would be able to recuperate its speeds once switching directions as well. For for this reason, the Mosasaur will once again take the edge when it comes to agility. But will the Mosasaur keep this streak when it comes to how fast they move? Number 5. Speed The metric testing how quickly both animals could move in a linear trajectory. But in this fight, this will be even more important because we will use this to determine how much momentum and impact power these two could wind up in a collision, as well as if they will be able to pull off a tactical retreat. When moving at high energy efficient cruising speed, the real life Megalodon was already one of the fastest sharks to ever exist. 
Its highly hydrodynamic body and inertia allow this animal to hit speeds about 20 knots or 23 miles per hour. If this figure fails to impress, consider that bottlenose dolphins, who by the way are considered some of the fastest animals in the sea, are a knot slower than a real-life megalodon. The Meg? Well, this guy has shown evidence of being able to swim much faster, capable of reaching speeds enough to catch up to whales, motorboats, and even jet skis, and make it jump out of the water with ease. Maybe not as high as a modern-day Great White, but considering the weight of this animal, these speeds could in fact surpass the real-life Megalodon. How does this compare to the Mosasaur? Recently, a survey commissioned by the team behind the series known as Prehistoric Planet managed to conclude that it was possible for the Mosasaur to burst to speeds that would clear 75% of its body length in just one second. Up to a whopping 30 miles per hour in a burst of speed and anywhere between 15 to 25 miles per hour in cruising speed. However, that's taking into account an animal that has close to no water resistance thanks to its smooth, streamlined body and a full fluke on its tail with enough surface area to push the required amount of water needed to propulse it itself forward. The issue here is that InGen's Mosasaur is not only bigger, but would be heavily slowed down by the osteoderms that inflict water resistance. Yes, these small formations are actually a big deal when it comes to underwater locomotion. As this animal makes its way through the water, these osteoderms would hold up the water sifting along this animal's body, producing something known as drag. This doesn't mean that InGen's Moza is slow, though. For an animal of these specific proportions, can allow better inertia to build up and easily maintain a top speed of more than 17.4 knots or 20 miles per hour, perhaps a bit more. The advantage for the Mosasaur is its ability to reach these speeds in less time at a higher rate, but will this be enough to win the edge? Underwater mobility during combat is different from on land in that both contestants will heavily rely on something called inertia, heavily affected by the top speed reached by both the Meg and the Mosasaurus. So in this case, once the Meg and the Mosa lock on each other, both animals will quickly try to wind up to top speeds. Even if the Mosasaur can reach top speed faster, the Meg will most likely have enough time to reach its top speed in a frontal encounter simply because there will be enough space between the two animals. Not to mention the amount of momentum packed behind an impact of a Megalodon going at top speed as well. Therefore, in this category, the edge for speed will go to the Meg. Number 6. Senses because both of these animals will fight in the vast open ocean, detecting each other's whereabouts is imperative to increase the likelihood of surviving this encounter. The Meg, along with other sharks with comparably broad muzzles, don't necessarily have binocular vision, but do achieve this by moving their heads side to side, giving them an overlapping field of up to 44 degrees. But one thing is being able to see, but another is to be able to discern what you're looking at. Sharks, unfortunately, aren't all that great at this, especially up close. This is the chief reason why sharks mistakenly attack humans on surfboards or even inanimate objects such as small boats for small whales or seals. At a distance, sharks will be able to tell what something is. Rough silhouettes will be detected as both food or threat, but up close, things become even more blurry. The Meg, however, did show some signs of better-than-normal close-range vision, given that it did identify the organism that was causing it pain in this scene. This could have been seen as a somewhat blurry image still. After all, it is mentioned in the novels that most of these Megs were in fact blind. These Megs in these film adaptations are an exception. Additionally, sharks have small electroreceptors known as ampulla of Lorenzini. Small mucus or gel-filled organs dotting the skin of sharks allow these to pick up electrical signals caused by muscular movements of any surrounding creature. These are even present on the sides of sharks known as neuromats, acting as the inner ear cells of this shark. But how did this Meg navigate through its deep and dark habitat? It's possible that the Meg evolved traits found in modern-day deep-dwelling sharks using a combination of their eyes to dim light contrasts and the ampulla to detect surrounding movement. 
Additionally, these guys have an infamously good sense of smell, not only picking up blood from miles away, but also distinguishing the scent of specific prey animals using other substances such as oil or loose skin cells or scales. This isn't particularly useful in combat, but will allow the Meg to detect the Mosasaur long before the Mosa detects him. InGen's Moza brings two large eyes with some pretty neat adaptations to the battle arena. Scaling to the size of InGen's iteration of this creature, this animal's eyeballs would have been about the size of a large grapefruit, reinforced by large sclerotic ring bones for stability. These allow the eye to focus while moving quickly and changing direction underwater. Therefore, in this fight, the Mosasaur will be able to focus quickly on incoming objects and have a really good sense of where the shark is at all times, as long as it's in close proximity. Their binocular field of vision, however, is not as high as when the Meg is moving its head side to side, spanning at about 29 degrees, similar to modern-day monitor lizards. This is still enough for this scenario given their wide monocular vision. But what about their other senses, such as smell? It is known that the modern relatives of mosasaurs are snakes and monitor lizards, which wield a special body part known as a Jacobson's organ, which relies on its forked tongue to catch scent particles and scan them using this organ, sending this data to the brain for processing. The issue with InGen's version of the Mosasaur is that there is no forked tongue, suggesting the lack of or a greatly diminished Jacobson's organ. This, however, could have been made up for with a better sense of hearing. Since this InGen Mosasaur was a very vocal creature, it's only plausible for this animal to have a developed set of ears. On one hand, you have an oversized shark with capabilities of detecting the presence of another animal from miles away, making ambushing this animal practically impossible and slightly better than average shark vision. On the other, you have a creature whose vision makes it an able combatant in close range. Both abilities are important for this matchup, but because the Meg senses set it up better for an ambush against the Moza, the Meg takes the edge in this category. Number 7. Intelligence The myth that sharks are mindless killing machines is a thing of the past, and there is much evidence to suggest that the real-life Meg may have been just as intelligent as the Meg seen in the film. This guy did display signs of complex thought processing, such as targeting the research station's glass and determining that this thing was indeed penetrable, figuring out how to properly attack awkward, unfamiliar objects such as this rollerball, and developing strategies to effectively kill many types of powerful life forms, such as this giant squid and kraken. In the latest installment, we witnessed this mech Hai Chi, who managed to recognize pulses, associating them with commands. The real-life Megalodon, as well as modern-day sharks, are believed to have a fairly large brain-to-body ratio as well, displaying key behaviors found in birds, mammals, and reptiles in terms of memory, coordination, curiosity, recognition, and learning. Furthermore, evidence of this animal's problem-high levels of discernment can be found in a rare fossil found in North Carolina indicating that when targeting other carnivores, Megalodon was knowingly attacking the head of the opposing animal in an attempt to prevent retaliation from the opponent. But how does this guy compare to a Mosasaur? Using real-life specimens as a base model for determining intelligence, we find that the Mosasaur group, as far as monitor lizards go, were likely the smartest. The Mosasaurus was probably even smarter, as their brain cavities suggest that their brains were more bulbous and the cerebellum was larger than that of a non-archosaur reptile. This implies cognitive abilities such as counting, distinguishing faces, social hunting, and advanced memory and learning capabilities. This is reflected by enough findings suggesting that these animals were able to figure out the anatomy of their prey pretty well. For instance, there are fossils of ammonites with cracked shells, indicating that the mosasaur would crack these to disrupt their buoyancy. And going as far as both adult and juvenile tooth marks on these, suggesting that the parents would actually train the younglings on how to hunt. InGen's Moza was likely just as intelligent, with its genome not being purely that of a mosasaur, but most likely involving other animals. An example is how this animal was suspiciously friendly to humpback whales, possibly even able to communicate with each other given that this animal does emit whale-like vocalizations throughout its appearances. 
Furthermore, this animal's curious tendencies and even figuring out ways to hunt outside its typical habitat implied that it's a very figurative creature, meaning that the longer the fight plays out, the better it will figure out the mag. As far as figuring things out on the spot, the edge will go to the Mosasaur. But before we move on to weaponry, there's another equally important factor to discuss. Number 8. Experience Unlike the previous section where the most figurative creature wins the edge, now we'll take into account the repertoire of opponents that each of these had to face throughout their respective lifespans. It is unknown how long these mechs have lived underwater, but taking into account where they come from, they are not only familiar with what is down there, but also familiar with the effects of different depths. This Meg, unlike the real-life Megalodon, had a few biological traits changed. These specimens had a much higher tolerance for cold, low-visibility waters. Its familiarity with this environment would mean that if it took the fight to deeper water, it would most likely have an edge down here. Additionally, this Meg was accustomed to fighting other large, hostile creatures that thrived in the depths of this trench, unlike the Mosasaur, who really never faced another underwater sea monster of this category. The Moza spent a big chunk of its life alone in her enclosure. After her escape, the biggest animal she could have encountered was a blue whale, which isn't going to be the type of animal to pose a huge threat to the Moza. If we take a look at a speculative repertoire of the opponents these two probably had in the past, we find that the Meg would have the edge when it comes to combat experience. It is now time to take a look at these animals' weapons. Number 9. Bite Effectiveness The animal that takes this edge will prove that it has the strongest, most effective bite, as well as being equipped with the best arrangement of teeth. Beginning with the Megalodon, these animals lived up to their name by having the most deadly set of teeth of any marine creature in existence. These teeth are a bit similar to those of a great white shark, but different in that they are wider and much more robust. Flat on the outward-facing side and rounded in the inner, this helped transfer impact force along the wide shape of the tooth. These were mounted on individual jaws that were not attached to the skull of the shark. These moved independently. That's right, this adaptation of the jaws allows the shark to lift their head and thrust their mouth forward to bite prey. Some real-life shark's jaws are reinforced with calcium salt deposits that give the surrounding cartilage more strength, allowing this shark to both inflict and soak up massive amounts of impact force. But what about the bite force? It is estimated for Megalodon's jaws to reach 25,000 psi at the front of the jaw and a whopping 42,000 on average at the back of the jaw, close to the muscle attachments. Note that if this shark does land a bite, most of the force will be inflicted by the front part of the jaw based on how these work. But the damage has just begun. After clamping its teeth, this shark would shake its head, thrashing at the victim, leveraging the sharp edges of these teeth to literally saw off a chunk of flesh. Avoiding massive amounts of blood loss is impossible after getting clamped on by these teeth. After all, this was the animal notorious for rushing whales down and biting their tails clean off. This scene here is entirely plausible in real life, given the resistance of these teeth and the power of this bite. So, how does InGen's Mosasaur compare? Just so happens that the Jurassic World website back in 2015 listed the Mosasaur's bite force at 13,000 psi, a bit higher than that of a T-Rex. However, PSI is admittedly a somewhat shaky metric to use since it really relies on a specific amount of surface area of effect as much as it does on actual force. An animal with a specific amount of teeth would have a much higher PSI than an animal that has more teeth making contact on a certain object, distributing the same force on more pressure points. Therefore, it's possible that the bite force of this Mosasaur would have fluctuated as its teeth arrangements changed as well, or depending on the type of target it would bite on. Mosasaur teeth come in different varieties, but can be described as conical, curved, robust, and slightly serrated, similar to those of a killer whale. Scaling up to InGen's Mosa, these would be a whopping 6 to 8 inches long, with the longest being around the middle of the jaw. In order for these to inflict maximum damage, these would first have to pierce and then rely on violent muscular movements for it to tear flesh. 
When we combine this type of bite damage with the momentum of the impact, we are dealing with a type of bite that could inflict deep, piercing wounds if the Mosasaur manages to wrap its mouth around that body part. Both of these two types of bite methodologies are quite devastating, but only one of these will win the edge in this battle. Because of the build of these two creatures, the stout build of the Meg will make it most difficult for the Mosasaur to actually open its jaw wide enough to clap down and rip flesh comfortably, limiting these bites to the narrower areas of its body. For this reason and because it has a much more deadly bite, the Megalodon takes a critical edge when it comes to bite effectiveness. Believe it or not, there is more these two have to offer in terms of weaponry. Number 10. Auxiliary Damage Upon first glance, these creatures would seem like they can't do much else other than to bite each other to death, but you'd be wrong. Both of these creatures, as well as other marine animals, have been seen countless times to deploy another attack methodology, ramming. That's right, both of these animals are capable of exercising this maneuver to maximum effect. But who does this better? To find out, we'll have to account for three important factors – speed, acceleration, and surface area. Sharks are very well capable of ramming into prey, sometimes on purpose but mostly to set themselves up for a follow-up bite. This can be done from the side or from below. As sharks age, their cartilage can also harden, approaching a density similar to that of bone, making this lightweight and strong material perfect for this sort of attack. Their nose, however, is pretty wide, meaning that any force, thanks to their superior swimming speed, will be mitigated because it will be spread along a wider surface area. This Meg can accelerate faster than your average shark, however, so this guy will have a higher ramming force than a real-life Megalodon. This was seen in how this Meg effortlessly rams into reinforced objects such as hardened glass or steel. On the other hand, we have a slightly slower Mosasaur, but one that can accelerate much faster and has a smaller nose. At first, you'd think that a smaller nose would inflict less force, but guess again. In this particular battle, this small nose will inflict literally tons of force on a large, stout opponent, increasing the probabilities of a perfect hit. How much force? Around 26,000 pounds per square inch, traveling at 16 miles per hour, assuming this was a perfect hit. Admittedly, most hits would reach levels lower than this, but really strong nonetheless. This would be enough to send pressure waves into the body, bypassing any armor or tissue, bruising the muscles underneath and rattling the internal anatomy. And on the off chance that this Mosasaur hits the gills, then we have a serious wound. Despite the shark's larger size and mass, the Mosasaur will be able to ram it with much harder force with little effort. Not to mention that this thing could ram more frequently given that it is in fact more agile and can accelerate much faster. Compare the piercing power of a sledgehammer compared to that of a pickaxe moving at a slightly slower speed. The same applies here. For auxiliary damage, the Mosasaur takes the edge. We are almost ready to unleash these monsters to the battle arena, but first we'll take one last set of important factors into account. X-Factors As discussed previously, both of these creatures differ greatly in how they process oxygen in their system, but perhaps the greatest difference of all is how frequently they acquire this element, or how they can die of the lack thereof. In the Meg's case, oxygen is acquired at all times as long as it's swimming forward. Any force that will prevent it from doing so for prolonged periods of time, or if it allows repeated damage to the gills, will cause this shark to drown. As this battle plays out, the Meg will run the risk of the Mosasaur finding this out. So, the quicker this battle ends, the better. The Mosasaur does not have the ability to extract oxygen from the water itself. It must swim up to take a gulp of air after its oxygen depletes. The risk here is losing enough limbs to prevent it from swimming upwards, or worse, being ambushed from below with an impact lethal enough to collapse the lungs. The stakes are high for these two creatures. Let's now enter the simulation platform. We are now ready to throw these two monsters in an underwater battle to the death. The Meg, with its massive stout and heavy body and weapons, wins the edge on armor, speed, battle experience, senses, and bite effectiveness. 
The Mosasaur, with its slender, agile build and deadly weaponry, wins the edge in being less vulnerable, greater stamina, agility, intelligence, and auxiliary damage. The watery arena is ready. Coming up, the Meg versus InGen's Mosasaurus. In this confrontation between these two animals, the Meg ended up as the indisputable victor. So why did the shark win? Upon further analysis, we find that both corporal armor and bite effectiveness were the battle attributes that weighed heavily when it came to determining the results of this battle. Because the shark has the higher likelihood of detecting the Mosasaur first, this battle scenario began with the shark attempting to ambush the Mosasaur. Near miss. The Mosa manages to dodge the attack. After committing to the first charge, the Meg now continues swimming to wind up momentum for a second assault. But the Moza strikes first. Having a stout body and thick skin is always helpful, and the Moza lets go of the shark and resorts to ramming. The shark, aided by the impact, now turns enough to shred through the Moza's hind flipper. The Mosasaur has never felt anything like this before. Panicking, she swims away, but now picks up on a weakness. The Meg now initiates a tactical retreat, but the Mosasaur is not finished. Knowing that these are a weak spot, the Moza reaches for the gills, but the shark's increasing speed only limits the damage inflicted by the Moza. We are now in deep water, a dark place where the shark takes full advantage. Injured but not defeated, the Mosasaur now knows where this shark is, and both find themselves committed to a frontal attack. The hardened head of the Meg proves too hard to bite through. Panicked and tired, the Mosasaur swims rapidly away from the Meg to reach the surface. In doing so, it gives the shark enough time to wind up the last attack. There's no swimming away from this one now. Taking form as a combination of a hellish amount of saw-like teeth and a heavy body carried forth by high speeds, 
This shark managed to land a blow to the side of the Moza. This provides little to no resistance to this sort of attack. The Meg manages to crunch through the bottom ribs into the soft belly, spilling everything out. The Moza met its end at the jaws of this Megalodon. But regardless of the outcome, there is no doubt that had these two swam our oceans, we'd be witnessing one of the most epic ocean battles in history. Special thanks to our team of researchers, animators, artists, and modelers that helped us bring this fight to life. If you want to see more of these fights and look at some behind the scenes, please consider becoming a member of the channel, buy merch, or simply hitting that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.